Good evening, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. How is the most powerful, the most loving, the most engaging, the most self-sacrificing couples on the planet this evening? Known as the ILM family. How y'all hey, doing hey, hey, hey. this evening? Welcome aboard for another episode of what? Marriage Monday. Monday. Amen. Well, again, I want to get into the challenge that I gave last week. Tell me, did you do the challenge? I gave you a competitive challenge last week. And the challenge was, who amongst the two of you could be more semicolon, loving? Who amongst both of you can be more patient for this seven days? And here we are, seven days later, and the questions, that, who won? Who won? Which one of you won? Did the husband win? Did the wife win? Was it a tie? Did you just work so hard to take each other's crap and take each other's anger and take each other's frustration? I tell you what, me and her just did it right before we get on the thing with you. So that's how real it is. We just got into it right before we're with you today. So, but here's the deal. We are within our challenge. Now, it just so happens that we're not doing it for a challenge per se. This is the way we practice our relationship. We work on it every second of the day because marriage is hard work. You follow me? Because it's a divine institution created by Come God on, whereby two rational free moral agents. Now, a little bit about that. Rational free moral agents. That means you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the deal. What I'm about to say next, when you correlate that with rational, it's going to be amazing. Here it is. Two rational free moral agents choose to enter into a covenant relationship with an almighty God. Now, here's the part that's rational. To stay with an imperfect person. You have to know what you're doing and choose to stay with an imperfect person. And you have to be rational about it. You wasn't drinking when you made the decision. You wasn't smoking when you made the decision. You wasn't on prescription medicine when you were making the decision. You were clear-minded when you said, I do. At least I pray yeah, they were a pastor. I pray that you weren't on those particular barbiturates and things like that. But if you were a clear mind, then you made the commitment to God to stay with an imperfect person. Amen? Amen. And so the challenge that was given to you the other week was to modify some of your behavior, was to capture some of the selfishness that you might yeah. present. It was to modify your behavior. It was to capture some of the, it's all about me in the relationship. Remember, we are couples, but we are also individuals. And as an individual, my will is what matters most to me. Mm, Think about that. Good, are you in a relationship with somebody and their will matters more than yours? No, your will matters more. I mean, think about it. Even you and God, his will is supposed to matter more, yeah. but he on earth, what you want matters more to you at least. And you're working on letting his will be done, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, All yeah. of us are. Yeah. And so, amen. And so did you take the challenge and what was the results of the challenge? Okay, live chat it in. Now you want to know. They want to know. I can feel the pulse of their question. Uh -huh. They want to know who won between me and you. I think we I, didn't discuss it yet. I think that they really want to know like what happened prior to us doing this broadcast. That's what I think they really want to know. Y'all want to know that? <laughs> can we tell it another time, please? Okay, <laughs> you really want to know? All right. Well, here's the deal. In the midst of interaction, one spouse may tell one spouse what they value, like what challenge they may have with something, with the expectation that that uh, spouse would care about what's being said. That's all, right? Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah go ahead. So tell them actually what happened. So we were about to come on mm -hmm. and I told her everything was okay. Because between the two of us, I trust me, I don't know much at all. But between the two of us, 
I'm more techie. Yeah, he okay? is. But I don't know anything, okay? In my opinion, my confidence is very low. You know a lot. <laughs> but between <laughs> the two of us, I know more about what we're doing. Do more research, all that kind of stuff. The tech, tech part. She's telling me something's wrong, and I'm telling her it's okay. She's not a very trusting individual, so she acts as if I didn't just say it's okay, and she just ignores that I said it was okay, so much so that she kind of badgers, nags, or something like that, <laughs> some word to say she is persistent in her questioning, and her persistence of questioning drives me batty sometimes, so I just take it apart and just show her that it's okay, and then I put it back, and as I'm putting it back, I say, you need to learn to trust me more than your husband. And she says, um, she says, okay, so, um, and then she moves on. So I was like, okay. Like, I heard her say okay, but it was like she dismissed me. You get what I'm saying? And so between us, she's the less emotional one. I mean, when she gets emotional, she's emotional. But when she's being tough, she's being tough. And so she frequently says, if I say, uh, you know, I hate that it's raining outside. It's going to be the dinner. And she'll be like, oh, so what are we having for dinner? You get what I'm saying? She'll just skip the subject. Now, I don't know why she does that. But when she does it, it challenges me. And so that was the moment. She said it, but it wasn't to me like she felt it. It was just moving on. And so I mentioned it. Um, it would be nice if you, you know, whatever I said, just, you know, felt it. And then she wouldn't leave it alone. And that's what happened. Yeah, but we cool, man. We cool we now, cool. though. We cool. We cool getting kids. So, the okay. thing... But, the, yeah. So, the thing about it, um, but the techie part was, I didn't feel like the camera was aimed correctly. So, that's it, right? So petty when you really think about it. Yeah, it'd be petty stuff. That's just good. It'd be petty stuff. Anyway, you may have something going on. The reason why we were transparent about our moment is so that you could identify maybe some pettiness in your moments, okay? That was petty. It wasn't about bills. It wasn't about leaving the toilet seat up or down. That's petty too. You follow me? But it wasn't about some of the characteristics in a relationship that we tend to argue about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't external affairs or nothing like that. It was just the position of a camera. And who thought it was okay and who didn't. And that's the kind of stuff that you might be arguing about here and there. If you are, I challenge you, who's going to love the most? You follow me? Who's going to put forth patience the most in that area? Because if you try to implore patience and love in those situations like that, you'll come out of it. Literally, you'll come out of the situation. You won't be holding grudges. You won't be angry all the time and pinked up and bitter against each other. You'll learn to love each other through you Amen. being human. Amen. So, <laughs> you want to answer the question? How'd you do? Amen. Well, we're going to read your live chats and we're going to read your comments down below and we're going to engage with you probably on next week on that. And so we appreciate your candidness and explaining to us where you were this week. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kofi. You're welcome. Um, I also want to say to those who are single who are watching this broadcast, because I remember Marcus, who's also a part of ILM, how he said that he wasn't married, but that he was going to still apply the challenge. I think what was really good about that is that when we learn to practice things in our singleness, that if we are wives, if we husband, we decide to get married, then it helps us in the marriage and build another relationship. So here is um, the challenge when Marcus put it out there that I thought was good mm -hmm. um, for those that are single, that if you're not married, the question is, did you apply it mm -hmm. to your uh, mentor, to a mentee, to a parent, parent-child relationship? Because I think uh, oftentimes what happens is those who are in positions of authority don't always take the time to apply patience with the mentee or with the one that they have authority over. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like Pastor said that um, I want my will done, but we have to learn to be patient with each other to yes. show more love that the, that the love of Christ will manifest in all relationships but here's the thing when and I love when you said about God's will because when I really think about that it's true like we love God and we want to obey God but there are um, moments in our own personal relationship with Christ where we just want 
our will to be yeah. done and we're not even really thinking about God's will. That's correct. And so um, I hope that you're getting something out of this. Hey, and if you have a, a concern or marital issue, live chat it in, give us a call. Maybe we can talk about, discuss it, and, and lead you back to the Word of God. How to take the Word of God and apply it to that situation in your marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, anyway, I don't think we have much time here left, right, um, you all, uh, for this broadcast. But we're going to um, go into a little bit because the recap was, was necessary about the challenge that's important so our uh, verse is taken from the new testament james chapter 3 verse 17 james chapter yes. 3 verse 17 and follow along with us and it reads but the wisdom that is from above is first pure yes, then peaceable gentle yes. willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to the message on Sunday, we use the word hypocrisy there, right? And what is hypocrisy is defined as a individual who has a pretense of being righteous, but really they aren't. Okay, that's just a short definition of it. So when we look at our marriages, who would you say is the one that is the most difficult one in your marriage? Who would you say, Pastor, with you and I? <laughs> it looked like he's telling y'all with his eyes. Okay, I'll tell you who's the most difficult one. It's not Pastor Kofi. It's Pastor Shelly. I am. It's true, though. I am the one that's the most difficult in our marriage. But <laughs> you know what? I'm growing. I'm yes, learning to admit my fault. And I'm learning to take the principles of God's word and to apply it to my marriage. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we can learn is that, thank you, that God's wisdom really teaches mm -hmm. us. It teaches me how to be my best in my marriage. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So listen to the scripture again. James chapter 3 verse 17. Mm -hmm. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Mm -hmm then peaceable, listen to these words, mm -hmm. gentle, mm -hmm. willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at that verse, there are about eight godly attributes in this verse. Have you ever looked at that verse like that? If we would really focus on one at a time and then use them together collectively by applying them to our marriage, mm -hmm. you will be surprised at the results that you would get. For one, when I begin to apply the yielding to my husband and allowing him to be the head of our household, mm -hmm. instead of me overexerting my will, I make an effort to be gentle with my words. Like, that's, that's a big one for me. Like, a lot of times my tone can be really, really harsh. Instead of being harsh in my tone, I'm giving it to you straight, right? No chaser, right? You can laugh. I'm, I'm learning and I'm growing. I'm leaning in the area of not picking at his faults. And instead, I start confessing my own faults. What? What? So I say that to say that. So I think for the challenge that we did <laughs> last week, I, to be honest, I didn't really focus on Pastor Kofi, what his faults were, what his wrongdoings, because if I'm transparent, which I'm going to be, he is really, really a patient, patient individual. He is really, really loving. I'm loving too, and I'm patient in areas, but at a point in my transparency, my patience, patience can grow very, um, it, 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 it diminishes, especially if I like, hey, keep saying something over and over and over again. But if I take it, my eyes off of him, and if I put my eyes on Christ and who I am and what I'm not yet to be right, but I'm going to be, I'm in need of the patience. And so I think it just uh, uh, allows for an opportunity for me to learn to, to apply the patience in my marriage. Because I do, I appreciate that Pastor Kofi, that my husband is patient with me. Okay? Hey, hey, anything you might add to that, Pastor? Just grateful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me too. Grateful for the growth. Yeah. Both of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to Jesus, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I cannot tell you how wonderful it has been to allow godly wisdom to override my weakness. Because anytime that we apply any 
part of God's word to our, our lives, to a situation, or to our circumstances, what we're really doing is we're allowing the wisdom of God, we're allowing his word to manifest and to override our weaknesses, right? And I really believe that marriages can be blessed by these eight actionable characteristics. Mm. And so I think because of time's sake, maybe we should stop here. But pick it back up next week if it be the God, if it be the Lord's will. But I want to I can hear the eight. encourage you, admonish you to study James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is far above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to take that particular scripture. We want you, would like for you to take that particular scripture and just really study it. Second Timothy 2.15 says what? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. But this um, lesson is really, really good. Um, I think that you're going to get a lot out of it. But the, the, best, the most you get out of it is by applying it. Amen. Amen. Amen goes right there. Amen goes where? Well. Right there. Hey, listen, I heard in her plea to you just now, out of James 3.17, I also heard the fruits of the Spirit, Spirit found in Galatians. Yeah, yeah. Gentle, you know, peace, love. All those things, uh, you must show them not to just everybody else. But show them to your spouse. Yeah, yeah. I think one That's of the things person. that relationships are guilty of in terms of a challenge in the relationship mm -hmm. is we tend to treat people external to our relationship better than we treat each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. You seem to be more patient with other people than with your spouse. Yeah. If you follow That's good. not all of us are like that, but I'm just saying as a as a whole, when you think of your relationship and you think of some of the struggles in your relationship, yeah. you often compare how your spouse treats others versus how they treat you. And if you see any dimension of change, mm -hmm. any dimension of difference in that, and you feel that they're leaning more towards the positive with other people, you're gonna feel that internally yeah. in your relationship. Yeah. And so I'm saying to you. Let's take the challenge one more week of being patient, of being loving, of being gentle, right? Of being willing to yield. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, that's right. Of show the fruits of the spirit towards your spouse. Yeah. And don't live within hypocrisy, meaning externally showing something in a fake way, but it's not really that. Don't do that. Amen. Give it to them raw. Give it to them real. But give it to them in love. Yes. Show your spouse that you love them in spite of their faults. Yeah. I'm going to say that one again. Yeah. Show <laughs> your spouse that you love them in spite of their faults. Yeah. Amen. 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 Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and if he's not the head of your marriage, if he's not the head of all your relationships, actually. See, you should be in relationships with other people where Jesus is the savior of their life as well. Yeah, hallelujah. That's something for you to think about. Because if you're unequally yoked in your connections, then you can't get the promises of God in that relationship. In that relationship. You can get the promises of God as you move on, but not in that relationship. Because two or more, they must agree. Or in that case, there must be harmony. Amen? Amen? And so if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, ask him into your marriage. Ask him into your heart. He'll be there to save you. He'll be there to change your life. And if you really want power, ask him to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Yes. So that you can have the power necessary to be more patient, to be more loving, to be more kind and gentle with your spouse. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, listen, we love you, but our time is up. And we thank you for yours. So always remember that ILM loves yeah. you. But mm -hmm. more importantly, God loves you. Peace. We'll see you tomorrow. Blessings. <laughs>